Hello, it is Topical Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. Steve Cypress here at the just ending of another spectacularly beautiful sunset here in an early fall day in sunny Arizona. Temps uh, around the mid-90s, which around here with almost zero humidity, a little bit of wind, uh, not a cloud in the sky, just a spectacular beautiful day. And uh, not a cloud in the sky, but I see... As the sun is setting behind me, I see the moon is rising in front of me. Check that out. Almost appears like a full moon in the video, but it is uh, apparently maybe about 80%. Anyway, let's go back and let you check out the sunset. Not that it usually appears too well in the video here, but there you can see a little bit of the orange behind the trees over the mountains. Anyway, let's get right to it. So the NBA, man, they... Fell into a whole pile of crap the last couple of days with their hypocrisy. First, I was thinking, oh no, you know, my beloved but haplessly miserable and embarrassing New York Knicks that I loved for basically my whole life. And I was like, do I got to give up on them too? Is the NBA going to be as stupid as the NFL? Where I gave up my lifelong passion for my equally beloved and equally hapless and equally embarrassing New York Jets a few years ago when the NFL made the incredibly stupid move, although it's ending up uh, not that stupid, and I'll explain why, but you know, they, they um, kind of bow down to their employees over their customer base. So the customer base, which is very patriotic, and their uh, employees, who tend to be radical leftists, and hate America and all that kind of stuff. So they did all this kneeling and disrespecting the national anthem and the flag and all this kind of stuff, which of course is against me personally and against the country as a whole. And yet the NFL said, uh-oh, what are we gonna do? I mean, the owners had a history of being complete asses to their employees, and yet they're over a barrel because of the scarcity of their employees. They have a whole draft system and a whole reserve clause system and contracts and you know uh, uh, very uh, scarce um, number to choose from for employees not like McDonald's that has a system in place so they can hire any 15 year old pimply faced kid off the street who can't even get to school on time and a whole bunch of them will just run a multi-million dollar business and throw off cash for the owner not so in the NFL you need they don't have any such system so they need highly skilled uh, athletes, one in a million of kids that say, I want to be a pro athlete when I grow up, and one in a million can get through everything and have the talent and the skill and the luck to make it there. And the NFL says, well, we can't piss them off, can't lose them, what are we going to do? You know, they did that years ago during a strike, and they had the scabs, and they suffered a big loss of fans and money. Uh, the fans saying, why are we watching this inferior product? So this time the owners said, screw that. We're going to uh, say, screw the fans and be in favor of the players. And it seems to be working for them. Because most fans uh, are kind of swallowing their pride and their integrity and their patriotism and saying, well, I'll just still love and be faithful and follow these these players and these team owners by extension that are disrespecting everything or a lot of stuff I believe in and because it's a monopoly and because they've built up all this uh, passion and addiction uh, most people not strong enough to stay away from the NFL so they continue to uh, to uh, to go uh, they probably they're, they're on the downswing and they probably won't last more than maybe another generation or two longer for other reasons on top of that one. But anyway, now the NFL, the N NBA rather, becomes completely stupid, right? So two days ago, the NBA, a couple of teams were about to go overseas, I think to Japan and play a couple of exhibition games, then they're gonna to go to China. Meanwhile, there's all this political unrest because China, of course, which is one of the most uh, heinously awful, uh, it's a, it's a uh, communist rule with an iron fist uh, government, right, that uh, puts the clamps on their um, their citizens, 
uh, and deprives them of rights more than just about any other country in the world. And it basically is anti everything against what America stands for in terms of freedom. And uh, they're having all these protests in Hong Kong, where Hong Kong, which has been a financial miracle, a lot because of financial freedom, and the people have been rioting for months in the streets every week, uh, demanding some personal freedom as well. And so this, I think from the Houston Rockets, their GM or assistant GM or some executive tweet something out, just a simple tweet saying like, you know, we support the Hong Kong freedom protests. Well, of course, mainland China goes crazy over that and says, uh, now that's it. Uh, we are not going to broadcast NBA exhibition games anymore. We're not going to uh, show the preseason games, whatever, all kinds of, uh, of backlash, financial backlash against the NBA. And so the NBA, this guy comes out, this this uh, Houston executive comes out and apologizes for the tweet. Oh, I'm so sorry to offend China. Excuse me? And then a couple of the players were like, oh, you know, we love China and we're so sorry that, you know, if we've offended our friends in China. Wait, excuse me? If personal freedom offends uh, China or anyone, by the way, and you take the side of, I'm so sorry that we came out in favor of American values and personal freedom uh, because we're chasing the almighty dollar. And so that's the business lesson here. Now then, the NBA took an about face. So congratulations. I, I immediately just sat there and said, really? The NBA is going to apologize for being an American business and having American values of freedom? Here we go again. Now that's it. I'm going to not uh, follow the New York Knicks anymore. But then today, the NBA commissioner came out this morning, I think, or last night, and said, uh, now wait a minute, no matter what China thinks, uh, we're in freedom of free speech. The Houston guy, uh, executive, can tweet anything he wants. He can be in favor of the Hong Kong protests. That's what we believe in. We're in America, and basically the dollars be damned. This is costing the NBA billions of dollars in revenue. They make tons of money off of China. One of China's most famous basketball player ever, the seven foot tall uh, Yao Ming, I think his name was, uh, is now the head of like China Ministry of Basketball or whatever. You know, it's a communist country, so the government's in charge of everything. And uh, they, are, uh, they, they produce huge sums of money for the NBA. And the NBA has been wrestling this with this for years as they attempt to expand, and they're not attempt, they successfully have expanded globally. They play games all over, they have um, you know, minor league type of leagues in Europe and all over the world, and their players are playing from all over the world in the NBA. You can't pronounce a lot of the names, the guys don't speak English, they play in the NBA. It's a world sport, they've done a super job, and the NBA was struggling a few decades ago, uh, obscure sport that nobody watched and had no national TV contract and all that, and now they just rake in the billions. And most of that is due to, uh, all of it is due to smart marketing and smart business strategies. You'd almost think they're watching my videos every day. Um, but also, and I say that facetiously, because also I learn a lot, as hopefully you do as well, from watching successful businesses like what the NBA has done. Over the past 30 years, there's a great book by, a couple of books by John Spolstra, uh, NBA executive with the New Jersey Nets and at least one or two other teams. And I think one of the books was called uh, How to Sell Lights to the Eskimos or something like this, where he was taking over the, the most ridiculously worst franchise, one of the worst in the world, with the, uh, the NBA New Jersey Nets. And he uh, put in all kinds of innovative strategies and through all kinds of great marketing and business strategies, started filling the arena and selling out and, and making a lot of money. So we can learn from lots of businesses, and the NBA's done a super job. But now the NBA commissioner came out last night or this morning and did an about face, thankfully, and said, you know what, in America, we do believe in freedom. So that Houston exec is free to tweet whatever he wants, and by extension, seems to say that we will remove the behind the scenes pressure of the players 
to apologize for the tweet and for the executive to apologize and for any of this nonsense of like, oh, we're so sorry that China, you know, is upset at us that we like freedom and all that nonsense. So I think you won't hear any more lies from the players of like, oh, we're sorry if we offended China. Like, no, actually, American freedom, uh, we are extremely happy that that offends China because China is one of the regressive, it's communist. I mean, it's, everything's run by the government. It's what a lot of the politicians running for office and even holding office all throughout the U.S. And by extension, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the American citizens are brainwashed to believe that like the government should be in charge of more stuff. Um, really? Because you take that to an extreme, you get to China. Take it to the other extreme and get the government out of our lives more and you get to what America uh, was founded on and what good luck, but uh, hopefully America would come again someday. So no, we're not sorry that we offended China because we're in favor of freedom and American values and free speech and all of that. So good for the NBA commissioner. Now, a business lesson in your business it's a very tricky situation. Do we apologize and kowtow to heinous customers, clients, employees, vendors who do not believe in what we hold dear, or more importantly, what our customers, clients, patients, members hold dear, like the NFL has done, and just completely... Uh, um, you know, be outright rude and uh, to, their, to their customer base. Well, in this case, the NBA is not dealing with the customer base, although it is Chinese people, like half a billion of them watch NBA games or something. But in China, it's not about the people, it's about the government, because the government, whatever they say, the people have to do. So it's still pretty much a customer, China. And so will they, they kowtow to a customer where in the NFL they kowtow to their employees, uh, both of which are in opposition to their, uh, the deeply held beliefs of the owners of the league overall of America. So it's a tricky situation. And so... My hat's off to the NBA, which said, yeah, it'll cost us billions of dollars, but we're going to stand by our principles. Complete opposite of what the NFL did, which said, screw our principles and the principles of our, our customers and, and our country. Uh, we need to chase the almighty dollar, and we can't have our players being upset anymore because the, the uh, NFL owners have a generations long history of mistreating the players so they got themselves into that trouble and uh and now they're dealing with it although like i said they're surviving but uh, that's a question in your business and uh, i don't know can't advise you one way or the other you can decide to be like the nfl and say the heck with the principles that we believe in or that our employees or customers or whoever believes in we're chasing everything is just all about the almighty dollar or you can be like the NBA, which started down that path on Monday, but then this morning reversed it and said, we're going to stand by our principles, even though it cost us money. Always a tricky situation. If you want help, you just want to talk it through, as always, you can uh, get on my calendar and we'll get on the phone and talk. I did a whole bunch of these phone calls today. They're real brief, but they're impactful. Everyone says thanks for the help. and So you go to helpfromsteve.com and I'll help you out. And that'll do it for Topical Tuesday. I don't see any questions, comments, concerns. If you're watching on the replay and you want to post them, go ahead. I always respond when appropriate. And I'll be back tomorrow with some business building tips, some straight out business building tips. It's going to be World Wide Web Wednesday, so I'll focus on all things internet, or I'll pick one of them, and I'll teach you a business lesson about that tomorrow. Hope you'll join me then. Adios, as the sun has set in the west and the moon is rising in the east we will bid adieu and i'll catch you tomorrow over now bye bye